Hello, welcome back to Gordon's channel. And in this video, I am going to talk about a feature called search feature. Because uh, in solo learn Q&A, uh, we occasionally see uh, people asking about this feature. For example, uh, today just uh, just then, a solo learner also put a uh, signal also asked me about this search feature. So I think maybe it's better to uh, record a video about it. And uh, for the search feature, we will uh, it can be very simple and it can go very deep. So uh, let us walk, walk through it step by step and to start from a very beginning approach to a very advanced approach. And uh, let's begin with an empty XML page. First of all, we use the exclamation mark. And then we have the... Okay, let, let us give a text here first. This one should be showing this. Okay, now, now here we have this page uh, on the live server. So when we have a text here, we can see that it is here. And for the search feature, it has uh, use of one simple uh, CSS property called display. And when the display is done, then it is hidden. So let us uh, add the style sheet. So it is uh, sometimes people use styles.css and script.js, but uh, it is not a good practice when your project go big. So if I name the file search.css, then I can combine it with my other uh, CSS file, for example, quiz.css, todo.css. So uh, it is better to use the specific uh, style sheet name. Now, this doesn't apply yet because I need to link it to, uh, to my HTML link relationship with style sheet. And the reference, let the auto complete, complete for us so we can uh, prevent typo. So now we can see that the task is gone because I have set display none on any uh, product. If I comment this out, And it is song again. So this is the basic uh, feature of why this one can be toggled. So let's uh, create some template. For example, I have a list. For example, uh, some movie name. Okay, for example, I have three uh, list items here, and uh, now if I add okay, suppose I have a button, and this button I have uh, clicked. Now I have a button, and this button I have add a button to it. Okay, this is one of the way to add a event listener to the button. And now let us add the script file. Search. Okay. okay. So now we have search.js and if the my function okay, let me console log it first so that we can know that it is running. So now uh, we need to add the uh, script to our file. But the best place to add script is at the end of body. And the source is search.js. So now, if I click click me, then when we go, go to the developer tool, okay, the console, we can see that the running is uh, hot because we have console a lot here. So now we get the element. Okay. 
elements by tagging, for example, uh, the lead, and then, uh, for example, the first lead. Okay, let us console log this lead first and see what this lead is. And this will be an XTML collection. So we, if we click it, we see that this is an XTML collection. It means that three lead element. So now uh, we need to use the index to call it. Say the first one, display equals none. Style, this one was style, style sheet and the display property of the style sheet is none. So if we click it, this one should be gone. Click, first one is gone. And we click again, and this one remains because the first one is the edited. All right, so this is how to set a style sheet on an element. And uh, if we want to toggle it, if we, let's, let's say it's not searching, if we want to toggle it, then it is to add a flat here. So now, now uh, we have a button which is when click we will call it on my function, and when it call the my function, it will check whether the flag is true. So if the flag is true, it will set this this item to none, and it will turn the flag to uh, its opposite side. And if this one is false, then this one we will set the list item that display as block. So this is visible again, and then we turn the flag to do again. So it, now if we click, click me and everything will be gone and we click again, it is strong again. So this is the, uh, how to toggle a one way to toggle the display. And if we want to want it to be a search feature, then we will need an input element. So now we have an input text box here. And if we input something here, we input some text, then we want this text this, this one to be uh, sorted based on this text, so we will get uh, the value first. Let me check. So let's say if we are still using this event listener, but then using the on click attribute on an element is not a very good way because uh, this is JavaScript, you put it in the HTML. So the better way is to uh, put it inside here. So button document dot uh, get element by typing for example button. Now this one is an HTML element element list. So if we want to use the first element, we need to uh, best use the index zero and then add event listener. And then we click the click event listener and then it is a function. my function cost and now we can remove this attribute here and we can see that this and now if we remove this attribute here we can see that this is still functioning because we have moved the add event listener to here and then uh, okay, so now we want to get this input so let's add a reference to it but there are many ways to add reference. For example, ID or class. And a uh, better way is to use class actually. Class is input. This is the search string. So for example, my class is search box. So now I want to add the element of the search box. Here, uh, for the add dependent listener, because this my fun is not very intuitive, so let me uh, change it to handle tag button. Let me change it to a very meaningful name, handle the click button. Handle click. And then we can uh, add this element. We have a class name, so we can this time we can use the class name.
elements by class name. Uh, the class name is this one. So we better copy and paste it. Search box. So paste. So now we know that this one is a list. XML collection. Control the log. It is a good practice to uh, log everything so we can know that uh, which steps go wrong. So now if we click it, we see that this is an XML collection input element with a search box class name. So now, uh, let, let us add a zero here. If we add a zero here, and this one is this particular element. And if we don't use add elements by class name, we can use query selector. Query selector, we don't, then we don't need this uh, index because if we use query selector, it is already Okay, so now if if you use the query selector, then this this uh, query string can be the tag name, can be the input, can be the ID with a hashtag, or it can be the class name. But if you, you want to specify the class name, then you have to follow the uh, CSS selector stand syntax. So you need to add a box here, box search box. So if we add the box search box now, before we add the box search box what we get is no because there is no element with the tag name search hyphen box so after adding box and then save and then click and we can see that this box search box uh, kiwi will uh, return this input element for us so this is how to use the kiwi selector and now after getting the element we can get its value by uh, getting the VS code is auto-completing something for me okay. if the value property on an input element we can uh, get the get the string that we have input so let us console log in so now if we type something here abc 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 we click and you can see that we have console log uh, input which we have input in the input box by input element dot value. Okay, so this is how to get the value of an input box. So now, if we use this button, then we will check. We will run run through this this list element. Okay, so we will run through it. And now we don't we don't toggle it, so we don't need this flag. So we can remove it, and we can remove this flag here. Now we are doing. Uh, looping over this lead element for we can use uh, many ways to look for it. For example, I'm demonstrating the most fundamental one, the for loop one. Let uh, equals zero. Okay. The first one is starting condition when i is zero, and the better keyword is let so that this i is possible, and then we can use i is smaller than. Yeah, this uh, this this have a uh, length property, so we can use the length. I plus plus. So each time it will step up by one, and then we can check whether okay whether this uh, list uh, inner text whether this list contains. A search key. Input element value. Okay. okay. Now, this one is for looping over this uh, element by telling Lee, and then looping over it, and we check whether the inner text includes this value. So let us try. For example, now we have uh, n, and we click it. Cannot it properly includes of defined. So now it is said that this Lee is undefined because this Lee is a node list but we are trying to uh, use inner text on a list so this is not okay. So we, we should use the index li. So this will look over this HTML condition for each the i the inner text of the i flee. Okay. So now let us try again. If 
exactly say and. So this one should be false, true, and false. Also, it's not a function. Okay, so we have missed log. So now, uh, input value is n. This one is the input value. The first paladin does not include n, and duty and this includes n, and superman does not include n. So this is, uh, we will need to use this includes method, uh, string uh, prototype includes method. So this one I will use if. If the in the test of the lead includes this value, then, and then else, okay, okay, we don't need this console log here. Come on, here. So now, if it is includes, so the display will be true. Display. If it is not, and this is not what we want, so this is high. Okay, so now, display if you remember we will use the element so element is this e element so e i now dot display because this one is shown showing it so block. and then if this one e i down dot display because if it does not contain it, we don't need to no one need to be displayed. So if we type n, after clicking, this one will be hidden, this one will be hidden, this one will be kept. Click. See? This one is kept because it returns true here. So this is uh, how to use the button to call the event listener. So if we remove every string, we will go back because every every string contains the empty string. So uh, after uh, apart from using this button, we can use uh, some event listener on this input element. So we can uh, remove this button. Okay. So once we uh, comment out this button, we will have a error in the console. Here, this said that we cannot add property add event listener on now, and it means that because here we are trying to add this element. And this get the element so this element will be empty XML collection. So here this one will be undefined. So this is uh will, will cause an error. So we don't need to add this definition here. Don't need it here. Comment out this. Because we are not going to use that button anymore. So maybe let me just comment them out. Let's delete them. Forget about the button. So now we want to do something. So once we add, uh, type in something, then this one will be updated. So here, what we will need to do is to let this time we want to get the input element, and we have get it here. So let's let's clear this one here. So this one is the okay. So this is too early to get the value. So here, uh, we will add the input element here. This element, oh, event listener. There are uh, several events suitable here. So uh, first one I want to demonstrate is change on change. So now handle change. Now we don't have a handle change because our event listener is handle click. So let's rename it as handle change. Now when we Input something here, and we change this value, and we will call this handle change. And this handle change is basically our previous handle click. So let's try it. If we try n and then enter, then it will become beauty and beast. It will uh, sort out the beauty and beast because this is the on change listener. So we don't need that button to click it. We just need to change this value. And there is uh, one more uh, listener for this, which is the input listener. And no input. It is a good practice to uh, change the name based on, based on the event listener. So if we if now we change to input event and when we input something, it is sort instantly. You see, when we input something, it is sort instantly. 
So this is the input listener. So input is uh, even more convenient than and change because if you just change, you have to click and enter to uh, effect the change. But if you use an input, and once you have input something, it will automatically run the callback. So this is uh, the input listener. And now uh, let's further improve improve this. For example, uh, here you see that this this one is what we want to search, but this one is in between this. So this when I type A N, I actually I'm not going to get Superman. You see? So how to solve this problem? This one we need to use uh, uh, empty space to uh, use it, and this is called red X. So let's see if I have red X. So this red S less limit. This red S less put it beside this thing. Okay, before before this uh, red S, let let me uh, demonstrate how that we can use not using this this input element here. We can because every time when we have a event listener, it is a parameter called event. Console the lot event. Okay. So let's console the lot this event. And if we type something, you see we have an event input event, which is called this truck, and we have a data A and many uh, other property with this event. So we have a uh, called target. You see target is input dot search box. So when we have uh, a lot of input box, then how do we know which box is uh, uh, picking this? Uh, input event, so you can use the event target. So here, when we have specified event here, we can replace this one with event target. See, and we use event target, we achieve the same effect because event target is where this event is triggered. So this is event target, and now I want to uh, use this x uh, SSB as the Value. So let's let me try this. A N. Okay. So now, when I when I input something, okay, let, let me remove this control lock first. I don't need it anymore. So now uh, it has not effect because we are not using this red at first. So now we, we need to replace this one. We, we are not using the string dot includes. We are using the red s. So let's comment it out and then rewrite it. JavaScript MDN. Okay, if we have met the problem, we go to the Mozilla doc, and then we can try to see how to use the Red X. There must be some method to test it. So now, if we use the Red X, uh, X here, we need to test 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 to escape it. So for example, escape it. There are many methods. So uh, if we have done this x dot exe, x dot exe, this one is already a red x instance. So this is the red x prototype effort, red x dot exe, and then we check whether this 
this string contain this string match the x. So let's try. Let's try it again. See, now this is working. Why? Why this one is working? Because uh, this one, uh, okay. Uh, then I was missing one backslash here because I need to press backslash to escape this backslash. And then this one means uh, space. This, this one means a space between or a starting. So when I have this uh, backslash B here before the input value, and then when I click A, it will uh, prevent, prevent this A or this A be being cut because uh, backslash B is you prevent this. So this is an advanced way of searching. Uh, so instead of using the string dot prototype dot includes, which does not check whether there is blank space. So uh, using the red x the plus plus b is uh, better. And if you are using the red x constructor, you need to use plus 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 b because you need to escape escape this plus less. Okay. So this is uh, one of the improvement. And now let me see. Okay, so some of uh, solo learner also asked me how how to uh, after after searching this result how to uh, make it a link. So once I click it, it will be direct to another page, and that that is very simple. So you just turn it into a. Okay. But you, but every change we make, we need to test it with different testing. So suppose I make it an a anchor element. So this one becomes an hyperlink. So it auto completes for me. So now if I have all A and if I try again, then it runs again because it, it still contains this test. So that's uh, how I can do it. Okay, let me try to add some. Let me try to add it so it becomes a link. Okay, so now it becomes a link. When I click it, when I search it, and then I click it, it will redirect me to another page. So this is how this uh, search feature works here. So uh, let me see what else do I need to teach. I can I can try to build a little UI, but that's not the point of this video. So maybe uh, I can stop here. Uh, no, I can make one more improvement. Okay. Example, example. Okay, just one more, one more point to develop for this software feature. So uh, let's say, for example, uh, let me expand my list first. Secret Chamber, Topet, Flyer, Sorcerer Stone. Have you watched Harry Potter? Okay, so now suppose I have different more more names here. Okay, I have more names here. Let me get something which has some. What else do we have? Game of phone, okay. okay. Let's say I have different uh, criteria here. If I use the off, then I will uh, add something. For example. Okay, now uh, you see that if I change the sequence, for example, of and then G, I want actually, I, I just, for example, I just don't know the sequence and I just uh, key in the word in a reverse order. How can I uh, make it that? If I remove the reverse the sequence, I can also get this theory result. How can I, for example, O F space G? How can I also get this? But this uh, will need us to use the string methods and to look over the uh, split it into an array of words and then split this into an array of words and then compare it with the end or, or operator. So let's let's try it. Let's try it. Okay, maybe this is too too long for this video. So let me uh, skip 
uh, stop here for this video and I will uh, continue it in the second episode of this video about how to uh, solve this problem, how to uh, develop this feature. So see you in my next video.